Welcome to Transperth News, where we talk about events and news happening on the Transperth network. In today's episode, we will cover five topics. The Mandurah Line shutdown, the two-zone fare cap, the construction of multi-story car parks, the construction of new train stations, and the airport line bus network. So without further ado, let's move on to our first topic, the Mandurah Line shutdown. From Boxing Day, the Mandurah Line will be closed between Elizabeth Key train station and Auburn Grove train station until the 15th of January 2022. This is to allow new train tracks to be built between the Glen Iris Tunnel and Cockburn Central train station, as well as moving the current Mandurah Line tracks to the side of the rail corridor. For the Thorny Cockburn link to be operational, this is required. So, the Thorny Cockburn link will be a new 17.5 km line running from Thorny Station to Cockburn Central Station with two stations in between, currently named Ranford Road and Nicholson Road. And once they put in the new, the new tracks, they're, they're going to have quadruple line between Glen, Glen Iris Tunnel in the median of the Kunana Freeway, an old tunnel that they built way back when they were starting to build the Mandurah Line, and the Cockburn Central Station. So they're already starting to upgrade Cockburn Central Station with a third platform on the northern end, a bay platform for the Thorny trains to terminate. And now they need to lay the tracks in the middle. So this is done during this time as it's the least busy time for travel, the new year period. Uh, yeah, so what's going to happen is there's going to be no trains between Auburn Grove and Elizabeth Key, which means you're going to have to use train replacement buses. But because it's such a major shutdown for such a long time on Transperth's busiest rail line, they've made a much more intuitive uh, rail replacement bus network. So you're going to have five, six, five, yeah, five different routes as train replacement buses. The original 909, which has always been the Mandarin line replacement bus, is going to serve all stations between a new temporary bus station that will be built at Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre so that it does that, so that the train replacement bus stops don't crowd Elizabeth Key and Perth Busport. Um, so it'll operate between there and Auburn Grove stopping at all stations as well as an extra stop at Fiona Stanley Hospital so the passengers don't have to transfer when they get to Murdoch. Uh, and then Route 919 will be express from Bull Creek Station to Canning Bridge Station or the Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre because after PM peak, the all services will go up to the Convention Centre but before that they will terminate at Canning Bridge and you'll have to use one of the uh, scheduled services like the 111 or the 160 or the 114 or 115 to get to Elizabeth Keys so that they don't have too much congestion at the station and in the CBD. Yes, and then you're going to have Route 929 Express to Murdoch, and this one will also serve Fiona Stanley Hospital. And then Route 939 Express to Cochrane Central, and Route 949 Express to Auburn Grove, which will be the one everyone should use if they're trying to go further than Auburn Grove. Route 949 is expected to take 40 minutes, while Route 939 is going to take 38, Route 929 is going to take 40, and Route 919 is going to take 25 to 30 minutes. To complete the journey. It's weird how the one that's closer to Perth, 929 from Bull Creek is going to take longer than the one from Murdoch, but I guess that's just how the bus station at Bull Creek is. Also Route 949 will be serving a temporary bus stop in the car park at Auburn Grove Station to also reduce congestion at the regular timetable bus stands at the station. Train frequency is also going to be reduced to every 15 minutes between Auburn Grove Station and Mandurah Station, which is going to impact train and bus connections. For a couple of days after the shutdown, trains will be operating at a lower speed on the new section of track. And here's a really exciting thing. Because of the shutdown, they're going to need many more buses to operate the train replacement bus services, which means that they're going to probably reintroduce some of the old NH buses that they retired a few months ago that are currently sitting in the depots and also it's confirmed that bus no 1769 has been brought up from Esperance to serve as a 
SA bus for the train replacement buses for the shutdown. So that's really cool. So we get all the old buses back. Like I said, when we were finding it in the press station video, they might come back for stuff like this, and it's true. So now we can go on another NH bus, and it wasn't the very last time when I was in the press station video. More information about this shutdown can be found on the Transperth website or on the Metronet website, but that's basically all you need to know. Just use the different train replacement bus routes. I'm going to be filming all of this once it starts going after Boxing Day. I'm going to go out and go on all these train replacement bus routes, look at the new temporary bus stations and all of that stuff. So watch out for a video on that. Now let's move on to our next topic, which is the two-zone fare cap. From the 1st of January, or New Year's Day, 2022, all, all journeys on the Transperth network will not, will not cost any more than two zones, as travelling from two to nine zones is now going to be capped at the cost of a two-zone fare, which is currently $4.90 for standard um, users, or $2.10 for concession users. This is also further reduced if you have a smart rider, especially with auto load. The price of the day rider and family rider are also going to decrease to $9.80. Uh, but this is now pretty strange because Transperth already doesn't make much money off their fares and now by reducing it they're going to make even less. But they might make more than expected since a lot more people are going to now decide to use public transport since it's cheaper so maybe it'll balance off. Uh, yeah, This will encourage the use of public transport during this phase where we are locked in our state and not allowed to leave until at least the 5th of February next year. Uh, but what's also I was thinking, you know how right now if you travel one to four zones you have two hours to do it and if you travel more than four you have three hours. So does that mean when you buy a ticket if you say you're gonna travel two to four zones then you pay the normal four dollars and ninety cents and you only have two hours, or you can say you're going to travel more than five, still pay the same amount, and then you get to travel for three hours. Or are they going to fix that? It doesn't say anywhere currently on their website, but they probably should fix it. Um, yeah, so you're, st you're still going to have to buy the amount of zones you're going, just it's going to be the same price if it's two to nine. Uh, yeah, And of course, they're keeping all the zones like out of Perth. It's not just one massive zone after zone one, so that if you're not traveling towards Perth, just some journey outside of Perth, you still have to pay two zones if you travel more than the one zone area. It's strange how all of a sudden this is happening. The prices used to increase every July, so the start of the financial year, for like 10 to 30 cents every year for quite a few years now, and it kept going up and up and up, and now they're just going to drop it all down to two zones, and they're even reducing the family and day rider tickets. So on the 29th of November, uh, the new multi-story car park opened at Mandurah Station, which I showed you in that video when it was under construction, but it was almost finished already. Uh, so now the station has 1,886 car parking bays, and that's good since more and more people are commuting all the way from Mandurah and its surrounding suburbs to the city for work. I mean, not if they work from home, work from home, but yeah, still. Uh, so now it has three stories, you've got the ground, the middle and then the top one which is uncovered and it's also got an artwork along the side celebrating the local flora and fauna of the area and yeah and that this was built because before the previous car park used to fully fill up by 9 a.m. already so they were in urgent need of this which means now the network has two multi-story car parks and one underground car park so the other one is at Edgewater and the underground one is at Claremont uh, and also they're planning to actually make another multi-story car park at Greenwood train station which is the station between Whitfords and Warwick which doesn't have a bus connection so lots of people drive to it they currently have this whole separate car parking area on the other side of the bridge for Hebron Avenue which is the road that crosses it across the freeway there and then there's some access road from the main car park to that car park so then now they've decided that they're going to build a multi-story car park which is going to cost 38 million dollars but then the amount of car parking spaces will be 1,600 
work is expected to start next year and it's meant to open in 2024. The proponents who will be constructing the Byford station and the new stations along the Armada Line level crossing removal project have now also been announced, which means that it is confirmed that Car Isle, Oat Street, Queen's Park and Cannington stations are all going to be rebuilt as elevated stations and Welshpool station is going to close as it is too close to Oat Street station to allow for the rail to dip down quickly enough. And yeah, so that'll upgrade them from being a hot station as well as to remove the level crossing adjacent to the station. Work will start maybe next year or the year after and eventually we're going to have brand new stations at those locations much better than the current hot stations that we have there along the Armadale line. The platforms of these stations will also be extended so that they can accommodate six car trains and eventually all the platforms of the old hot stations will be extended so that B series can run on them at full length once the C-Series is fully implemented. The new northern suburb stations, Alchemos, Eglinton and Yanchip, have also started to be built now with the foundations for the platforms underway, and Bayswater Station is having its concrete port to build the bridge uh, that the station will be situated on. Oh, and there's also a Lakeland Station which has started to be developed now. For a while now we have had the artist impressions of Whiteman Park and Noranda Station released to show what they will look like on the Morley-Ellenbrook line. And finally, since November now we have had the bus network maps released for the Forest Field Airport link, although these were put up onto a survey for locals to say if they like it or not, so it might change. But currently we have, we have been shown that there will be six routes serving the new Redcliffe Station, one of which will be a new high-frequency service between it and Elizabeth Key bus station via the Great Eastern Highway. Also, the current Route 935 high-frequency route will also serve it. And then the others will be 39, 293, 290 and 291, which will go to Elizabeth Key, uh, High Wycombe Station and Midland Station, connecting all those together. And then High Wycombe Station is going to have, I'm just looking at my screen here, uh, what is that, eight, eight routes serving it, which will connect up also to Midland, Redcliffe, Clamanda, yeah, all of those areas. Uh, and these are going to be 270, 275, 276, 277, 278, 293, 270, wait, well, yeah, I already said 270, 271 and 280. Um, so many of these will go up into Kalamanda and serve different areas. Uh, yeah, one, one will go to the Kalamanda bus depot and one will go up through Gooseberry Hill and just, yeah, you can see it on the map for yourself. And there's also going to be a new little circular route going around Kalamanda which is going to be the 273, a very small route there. And what do I think of this? I think it's pretty good how they've sorted out all the new bus routes. I was always wondering how they were going to do it, and now here it is. It might change a bit because of the community surveys. Look, here you got the 270 going on the Tonkin Highway for a small stretch. That's pretty weird. On the freeway, highway, whatever. But yeah, otherwise, I think it's pretty good. So, yeah, we'll see what the final routes will be once the community surveys, surveys are analyzed and the line is about to open, which should be sometime soon, because originally it was going to open in 2020. Now it's already 2022 and still not opened. But yeah, it should be very soon. And I'll make a massive video on that as well. Thanks for watching the whole of this Transperth News episode where I went over a few of the things happening soon, especially the Mandarin Line shutdown and the two zone fare cap, those are major things. Um, I'm just going to quickly say that I've now started up an Instagram page for this channel as well, which is just called Transport of Perth YouTube with underscores where the spaces would be. 
and all lowercase because the username can't have capitals. So on there I'm just going to post little things which aren't worth putting into a video or just pictures of buses like in general. I've posted one already and I'm gonna post more soon. Uh, yeah, so you can go in there and follow that to see more s more s content. Uh, and if you want to contact me for any reason, you can do it in the DMs and Instagram there. Yes, thank you for watching.